The entrance of God's word gives light and it brings understanding to the simple. Even as you're about listening to this message by the man of God, we hope that the light of God's word will be shed abroad in your heart. You will know what to do and you will know how to live. And so if you're new to this channel, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this message. Also go to the comment section and comment whatever you have learned. Share this message abroad because we won't always be a blessing to the world. So Paul lets us know what he meant by written before time. Now, which he had promised afore. Now, something about the word promise, when I say I promise you, there are two things it means. I can promise you money, then I give you a date when I will give you that money. So when I promise you money and give you a date, it means that in so and so date, I will give you this amount of money. But usually that's not the phrase promise in the Bible. Promise in the Bible is the word epangelia in the Greek which is more of a commitment to do what I have said, a self-fulfilling commitment, not necessarily a future expectation. So when God says, I promise, I can also promise you I will never lie to you. I promise you I will be with you. I promise you to be loyal to you. I'm not saying you should wait for it on a particular day. I am telling you what I mean to you and what you mean to me. That's the way God uses the word promise. When we call God's word a promise, it's not a future wish. When we call God's word a promise, it's not a post-dated check. It is what he is to us. What he is to us what he means to us what he means to us that is he is going to be personally responsible for what he said god is going to be personally responsible for what he said in that romans chapter 1 verse 2 promise before or promise afore god promise ahead of time he promised before time. So which means that in Romans 15, 4, Paul is saying that when we read the Holy Scriptures, what do we see? He says the things written aforetime time are for our learning. If your Bible was mine, I will underline the word learning. The word learning there is the Greek word doctrine. The word didaskalia. Didaskalia for our learning. Which means that when I take the scriptures, the Old Testament as we call them now, it is for my learning. Now the word didaskalia in the Greek is used in the greater Roman world. The Greek word for how you study in school, didaskalia. The way you study in school. How do you study in school? You study in school to know the details of your study. You pay attention, you study, you focus on the details and then also in understanding the subject matter, you are also able to apply it. So the Old Testament books are written for doctrine. More than that, notice what Paul says to Rome. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures. The word comfort there doesn't mean somebody is comforting you because you are sad it actually means something to stand alongside with comfort it means something to stand alongside with something you can take on a journey the word comfort means to actually come near to you through patience and the comfort of the scriptures we might have hope. Now what is hope? Hope is not a mere wish. Where you were somewhere and began to wish you can get somewhere else. Hope some, simply means to have a picture. To have an expectation. The way someone is going to build a house for you. Then they show you what to expect. 
the genuine ones like a design a 3d or a 7d they show you the picture of how the rooms will look like somewhere in your mind you are able to see yourself in the building hope is when you paint a picture of a yet fulfilled expectation but it is strong okay it is strong they're able to explain to you and you have a picture of what they are talking about you can see exactly what the architect is saying hope is not a mere wish hope means that you have all the resources in place you just want to put the house together the word hope in the greek is the word elpis then another word elpizo elpis e-l-p-i-s another word elpizo e-l-p-i-z-o it has three meanings you must always know god's word and what it does to us number one it gives us confidence it gives us confidence which is the fact that this is me the story of people in the bible that god does things for is meant to give you confidence just the fact that it happened before it means it can happen again the same way when we read scriptures we are supposed to have an expectation a confident expectation that is sure why because it happened before jesus the same yesterday today and forever so if he did it yesterday he will still do it today he will still do it forever so seeing that he has done it before gives us a confident expectation and we can see him doing it again am i communicating at all we can see him doing it again when we hear god's word like we're hearing now we are meant to see an expectation yeah which means that the word of god therefore will paint pictures in our minds the word of god will paint pictures in our minds. that's very very important and with these pictures which means that when i read stories in the word of god those stories come to me as pictures words paint pictures words create images now that word is from the word elpizo elpizo means to expect is stronger than a mere wish to expect an outcome to expect a definite outcome in Acts chapter 2 verse 26, please pay attention. Acts chapter 2 verse 26. That is not a mere wish. Read it for me. Therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad. Moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope. My flesh shall rest in hope. That is not a mere wish. Hope actually involves your action. You don't stay idle when you hope bible hope has you cooperating in your actions which means you've got to do something you get to act on something you don't just sit down and hope you've got to just you've got to do something and expect something to happen which means hope involves your action so in acts chapter 2 verse 26 peter tells us what jesus said when he was in shoal in hell or in the grave jesus was not just making a mere wish read for me again acts chapter 2 verse 26 acts 2 26 because thou will not leave my soul in hell neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption because thou will not leave my soul in hell neither shall you suffer your holy one to see corruption how was jesus as a man confident that god will raise him from the dead how was he confident 
Look at what he said when he was in the grave. Thou shalt not leave my soul in hell, nor allow thy holy one see corruption. What gave Jesus such audacity? What gave Jesus such confidence? Because he saw the story of Jonah. He saw the story of Jonah. Jonah was that confident. Jonah was in the belly of the whale. Unlike Jesus who went on our behalf, Jonah went because he was disobedient and Jonah went into the belly of the whale. How many of you know that the whale, belly of the whale is not a guest house or a hotel? The belly of the whale is for those who are dead. So Jonah was dead. He wasn't in the belly of the whale singing praises. He is dead. That's why everything he said in Jonah chapter 2, he said, I was in the belly of hell. So he speaks about resurrection. Jesus therefore likens his resurrection to what happened to Jonah and what happened before. And Jonah came back to life and went to Nineveh to preach Jesus. And Jesus also came back to life and spent 40 days teaching. So because it happened to Jonah, Jesus had hope. Because he saw that it happened to Jonah, Jonah was raised from the belly of hell. Jesus knew that if the father did it to Jonah, he will do it again. So the hope of Jesus was confident because he could trace it to what God has done before. You have a Bible that records the accounts of what God has done before. So when you read those scriptures, you have a picture in your mind that if he did it before, if you get into that situation today, he will do it again. We are so grateful for having you here on our platform. Kindly hit the subscribe button if you are new here. And also like this message for us. Do well to comment in the comment section because we want to know what you learned and where you're watching us from. Thank you, message community.